Good morning, first grade, are you here? Can I hear you? And you can stand up to say hello to me. Good morning, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Well, good morning, first grade. I hope you had a pleasant weekend. I know mine was busy as usual, busy with all kinds of good things, cooking and cleaning and parenting and working and all kinds of things. So today, of course, is the beginning of the school week, and that means it's Monday, and I will write that word on the board, because that's today. I will write it over here. Mm, starts with a mm, Monday, Monday. D-A-Y spells day. September, it's going to be September for many more days. Sep -t -e -m, September, September, you know several of those letters, you know that. Well, you don't quite know the T yet, or at least I haven't taught it to you. But we did learn M, and we did learn B, and we did learn R. So there's SEP, and we did learn S. So you can hear in this word, SEP, TEM, B, ER. Hear all those sounds in there. September, September 14th, if I am not mistaken. September 14th, 14. Biting your tongue and saying this sound. September 14th, 2020. Will you say it with me? Today is Monday, September 14th, 2020. In Spanish, we would say hoy es, that means today is hoy es lunes. Oh, dieze cuatro. I think I'm speaking Portuguese now. Dieze, dieze cuatro. Septiembre. Septiembre dos mil veinte. If we want to repeat the days in English, we would say Monday. This is the five days of the school week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And if we were to say that in Spanish, we would say lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes. And then in English, the weekend is Saturday, Sunday. In Spanish, sábado, domingo. That's a lot of words to keep track of. But if you keep listening to them and saying them as often as I do, at least, and practicing them other times, you will definitely learn them, I promise. Days of the week in English, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then the weekend, Saturday, Sunday. In Spanish, lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes, and the weekend, sábado, domingo. All right, that's enough of that. <clears throat> oh, today is the 14th. Is it really the 14th day of school? I want to double check that in case I missed one, but I think it is the 14th, which is funny because it lines up with the 14th day of September, which is rather complicated in terms of the weekends and all that stuff. Um, I wonder if you have any words that you would use to describe today. Let's just think about just the weather. And we have different kinds of words. They're describing words, so describe this day, we did this last week, too. It's sunny. It's almost always sunny. Sometimes it's cloudy. It's warm, which it usually is here in Hawaii as well. It is outside. I can see grass. I might say it's grassy. I might say it's breezy. I might say it's actually a little cool because it's the morning. Even though it's warm, it's also cool compared to being hot in the daytime, in the midday. What else can we say about today? It is pleasant. It is beautiful. Those are all words to describe this day. And you can use describing words to describe yourself, 
or any number of other things. This describing word is flat. So you can use that kind of word in many ways. It's lots of fun. All right. Now, I have a couple of new little morning songs I want to sing. Two morning songs just to greet the day, and I couldn't decide which one, so I'm just going to sing them both. They're short, though. So the first one is like this. Oh, morning verse. What am I thinking? Forgot the morning verse. Here we go. The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I, with all my might, may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. That's the way I like to read the day in grades one, two, three, and four. So, um, and we'll start doing that in Spanish as well pretty soon once you have this first one memorized. So always say it with me best you can. All right. Morning has come, night is away. Rise with the sun and welcome the day. Morning has come, night is away. Rise with the sun and welcome the day. I hope you're standing up and moving your arms and singing with me. Ready, set. Morning has come, night is away. Rise with the sun and welcome the day. And then this one is a little more lively. It goes like this. First I bend over and touch my toes. Ready? I hope you're doing it with me. Oh, I like to rise when the sun she rises early in the morning. I like to hear the small birds singing merrily upon their way. Hooray for the life of a Kona kid tumbling in the sunlit waves. One more time this day, maybe two more times. Oh, I like to rise when the sun she rises early in the morning. I like to hear the small birds singing merrily upon their way. Hooray for the life of a Kona kid tumbling in the sunlit waves. Oh, I like to rise when the sun she rises early in the morning. I like to hear the small birds singing merrily upon their way. Hooray for the life of a Kona kid tumbling in the sunlit waves. Good. Well, those are the two I wanted to sing to you this morning. Um, I want you to be ready to do a little bit of practice of the form drawing right now so that a little bit later we can put it in our main lesson books. So the practice looks like this. We have, I re think you might remember this from last week. This is my page. I put one line right down the center, starting near the top, ending near the bottom. So after you do that, now I'm going to use my finger. I'm going to start my first line here, close in, and, oh no, I'm not. I'm going to start it further out, like that. I'm going to bring it in, just like our old curved line, but this time it's going to spiral at the bottom, all the way around. And on the other side, same thing, starting out here, going in toward the middle, getting closest about the middle of my line, and then going out, 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 and away and down, and then up. And over loop de loop like a crazy wild roller coaster ride that would scare me. All right, here we go. I practice with my finger. Maybe you want to start with yellow, so in case you make a mistake or you don't like your work, you can kind of go over it in a little bit darker color. So here I go. I'm going to quiet myself, concentrate, and I'm going to imagine my line going all the way around and curling once around, twice around. Here we go. Kind of 
kind of tricky. Even trickier to do the other side to kind of try to make it match. Okay, ready? Practice with my finger again. This is our practice. Later we'll put it in the main lesson. Pretty good. When I'm doing my second one, I kind of keep an eye on this one. I'm not really looking at it exactly, but I'm using the side, my side vision, my peripheral vision to see, to look at that other line a little bit. I'm really looking here, but I'm paying attention to what's over here to try and match it. And that takes some practice. That's our form drawing. We will do it in the main lesson book later. I will leave it there for now. You can always pause the video if I got ahead of you and just do it and then catch up. Um, all right, so that's that. Oh, and I want to practice the, uh, why did I write, oh, I'm going to practice the M and the W as well, because we can put that in our main lesson book as well, and then it will be time for Auntie Jackie, I think. So, and, oh, I hear her chortling a little bit outside. So, M, again, kind of nice to start going down a little bit at an angle, or you could go straight down, and then most of the way down, but not all the way, most of the way down, not all the way, and then matching this one in the same way that I did my form drawing, focusing on this one, but keeping an eye on that one. M, or you can also start here. Most people do it like that. Most people do it this way, although I think it comes out a little nicer. Do it down, 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 four times. One, two, three, four. Now, lowercase, I start right in the middle. I start right in the middle. I always start my letters at the top. Go down, bounce, and make two little mouse mountains. Doesn't really look like a mouse, but maybe if you use your imagination. M, again with the orange, going, starting here, going down and bounce. Down and bounce, and all the way down again. W, or wobble U, as I like to call it, or a double V. It really looks more like a double V, but that's okay. Now, my W is not exactly like an upside down M, but it's similar. I don't really go quite past the halfway point when I come back up. This is the top, this is the bottom, this is the half. I stay about there. Good down and then up. If you want to be a architect someday, you might want to learn to do this. I might be wrong about that, but when I look at their writing, I see that going down, 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 down. But most people, again, go down, up, down, up. And there's my wobble U, my W. It makes a whoop, whoop, whoop sound. That's why I call it a wobble U. And then Lowercase is half the size and goes all the way back up. Looks very similar to its grown up friend. All right, Jackie is here. Welcome. Oh, I think she's here. Is she here? Oh, good. Jackie, are you here? I'm here. Good morning, Auntie Jackie. Good morning. And Auntie Cheyenne is helping as well. Good morning, first graders. Here I come with my box. Good morning, Mr. Coulter. Good morning. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Hi, guys. Good morning. How was your weekend? I did a little gardening this weekend at my house. I planted a bunch of bok choy and lettuce, and then I went wandering around and I got to collect some fruit. I love a weekend at home. So, I have brought you some things and I wanted to check some things out. When we planted our seeds last week, we tapped it, we watered it, put our seeds in, and we put on a blanket. I'm gonna go check it, what I just put there, last week and see how it's doing. So 
So I have my plant and I'm looking inside and nothing, nothing. And that surprises me. When we were working, when I was with you last week, I looked inside my seed pack and I said, oh, we have a lot of seeds. I'll only put two in. So I know I still have a lot of seeds and my curiosity is so strong today that I am patient, but I also know they should be showing something. They should be coming up by now. So I am going to get curious and I'm inviting you to do the same if you are, want to. And I'm gonna poke around. I'm gonna scratch around in my soil. Cause I don't know what's going on. Are they rotten? Are they just ready to come up? And I'm being gentle to know what happened because if it's rotten, then I'm gonna have to let my soil dry out. Try again. What would you do if you found it rotten? I do not even see any seeds in here. Maybe I don't see them. But I am not daunted. I am ready to try again. I'm going to take my soil. I'm going to smooth around. Then I don't have any left to make a blanket. Remember, we put all of that in there to make a blanket. So I'm going to take my pinky. I'm going to poke a tiny hole, not a deep, deep hole. Don't want to get too lost in there. I'm going to take my pinky. I'm going to look where my pinky nail meets the skin. You see that little spot right there? That's as deep as my hole is going to be. So I'm going to push in gently, push two holes, and get my seeds out and do it again. How does yours look? Is yours coming up? Are you curious? Do you want to plant more seeds? If you want to do that, I'm going to just show you simply. We do it all over again, but we use our pinky to make a little dent. All right, I'm going to try it all over again. I'm going to do one pea and one corn. Pinchers coming in, one corn in my little hole, one pea in my little hole. And then I have to pinch the soil like a little blanket again to cover it. I'm not going to water it this time. It's sticking to my finger. It's still wet. And I'm going to leave it in here, put it back in the sunlight, and see if we get it. Well, I was looking around the garden for something to show you today, and I put it in my collection can that I have inside my box. And in my can, I wanted to show you guys this. I'm, there we go. I wanted to show you these leaves in the garden, and I'm going to be very curious about these leaves and ask you to be wondering about these leaves too. Wonder with a W. Look at that cute little set of leaves. Okay, they're very small. And they were on the same plant as this set of leaves. So I would consider this one the big sister and this one the little brother. See how they're very similar? but they're different sizes. They're coming from the same plant. And this plant is getting what it needs because it's growing nicely, making new leaves. And I started to think, well, this plant is getting what it needs. It must be in the right spot. It must be getting good sunlight. What else does that plant need? Water, sunlight, it has enough room to spread out. And it has air, it has the air. And then there's something else I wanted to share with you. It has the moon. It has the sun, but it also has the moon. And the moon, the moon will also impact our plant. Did you know that? The moon, as it's moving around in the sky, and then from day to day, the moon is positioning itself a little differently. Sometimes we see only a piece of the moon, a sliver. Sometimes we see the whole moon. The moon will affect the plant. And here in Hawaii, for so many grandmas and grandpas and generations and kupuna and keiki, people have been looking at the moon so that they know the best time to garden and also the best time to go fishing. So they listen to the moon and we are trying to listen to the moon and look for the moon when you can. Did anybody see the moon yesterday in the sky, in the daytime, in the blue, blue sky? You look up and you see a little piece of moon. I would love it if you guys would keep track of that moon a little bit because it will help inform us what's going on with the plants and when we're going to put the seed in the ground and when we take it out. So the moon is, is really part of uh, what we want to um, pay attention to in our nature and our plants. 
The moon even affects people. I know that to be true. And the water, even the water in the plants, the water, if it doesn't have enough water or if it has too much. So um, I think I will let you think about the moon. I want you to go looking for some leaves today that you really like. And then t tomorrow I will show you how we do leaf rubbings if you haven't done them already. But if you have done them, bring your leaf tomorrow. And when we get together in our class, we will use our um, cardboard. I'll, I'll be right back. When you're done, Auntie Jackie, will you help me with, uh, will you help me demonstrate a couple of little things? Yes, okay. please. Here's your flower for today. Thank you. Um, you are going to come to garden class tomorrow with your cardboard and a piece of paper. And this is the instruction. So if you want to try it tonight or with your family or when we're done, this is the one that teaches you how to do the leaf rubbing. We'll do it again tomorrow. You could do leaf rubbings for many, you know, you could do it a lot. And then when we get together tomorrow, I'll even help us name the different parts of the leaf. Because some of you guys, you know leaves. And if I can give you some names, we'll talk about our leaves. Like, my leaf has a long pedicel. Or my leaf has a very prominent vein. And if leaf rubbing is something you want to do today, you can do that. You'll use your crayons and your directions and your sheet of paper. That water and the moon are our friends and they really affect us. So aloha today. I'm going to stay here with Mr. Coulter. I'm going to do something. All right. First, I would like to play the hand clapping game, the sailor of the sea. And I would like to challenge you to a game of tic-tac-toe. Uh -huh. and, and then I want to do uh, something new, which is to write on your back with my finger some of these letters and see if you can guess what they are. Oh, I like that idea. Because that's okay. our homework mm -hmm. also. All right. Okay, Sailor went to sea? Yep. The sailor went to sea, 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 to see what she could see, 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 but all that she could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea, sea, sea. One more time slow. The sailor went to see, 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 to see what she could see, 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 but all that she could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see. I love that. Great. All right. A little tic-tac-toe to remind the children what that looks like. I hope you've been playing tic-tac-toe. That is sort of part of your suggested homework. Would you like to be X's or O's, Auntie? Mm, X. Okay, will you go first? Yes, please. Can I be yellow? You can use any color. I always like the middle. I always like the middle. Mm -hmm. Someone goes in the middle, I usually go in the corner. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh, one, two. Guess I better block that one. <laughs> Uh-oh, one, two. Guess I better block that one. Oh. Um. Does he, is he planning something? All right, I'm planning something. I don't think we're gonna get one here. Let's see, he might wanna do that. Okay. Well, I have to keep on blocking. I can't do anything. Whoops, that was, that was what? Maybe win. Oh. Um, just keep on blocking. Oh, uh, nobody won! Cats game. Cats game. Draw, tie. Do you Ooh. like that game? Tic-tac-toe? Yeah. I kind of do, you know, Usually when grown-ups play it, as you know, you kind of get used to it and you figure out the tr kind of some tricks to it. But I was very surprised when, a week or so ago, Uncle David beat me in tic-tac-toe, which I did not think anyone could ever do again. Well, I'm rusty. I haven't played it. I forgot all the tricks, so I didn't win. But you know what, you guys? You could um, do this in the sand at the beach. You could just get a stick or your finger and you could play it at the beach. Definitely. That's a great mm -hmm. idea. All right, if, you, if I could write on your back now, let's keep your back yeah, facing kind of, that's perfect. All right, so I'm only going to do the letters that we've learned so far. Okay. See if you can remember. It tickles a tiny bit, but. C for cat. C for cat. Okay, how about this one? Ooh. B for B. B. Let me make this, yeah, I can do another one now. Oh, mountain. M mm. for mountain. Mm. 
Yes. You are so good. Yeah, I've been writing letters for them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, that's your homework, first graders, is to um, ask someone else to write some of those letters that we've learned so far. Thank you so much, Auntie Jackie. And okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Leaves. Bring a leaf tomorrow. Check on your seeds. We'll see ya. Very good. I always make a mess. Let me clean up my mess. That's okay. <laughs> All right. The next thing I want to do. Oh, speaking of speaking of S, I wanted to um, after we. I wanted to do this. This has an S at the end of it, doesn't it? This. See if you can notice all the different times when you use an S or even a Z sound. A Z sound. Sometimes an S kind of tricks us and makes a bit of a Z sound. Let's see. I'm going to. Bring out my little box of things that start with S because we worked on S last week uh, and we did not put them in our main lesson book either, I don't believe. So we ended up with three letters that we were working on and we will not yet put S in, but we will um, look at our S things, the things that start with S. It's a category of words that's different from the describing words, isn't it? Snake. I'm going to come closer. If you think you know what it is, say it out loud when you're at home. Six. I'll make this sound and you can... What was that? Oh, this is something that you put at the grocery store. Sometimes you can put thing, your vegetables in there and you weigh it on a scale. Oh, 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 Santa. Oh, goodness, this is exciting. Giddy up. It's a, it goes on a horse, it's a, it goes on a very tiny horse. Saddle. It's this one. Oh, it's a little plastic toy thing that you use to put screws in, screwdriver. That one belongs in a different container. Here is another snake. This is a creature that lives in the sea and it's called a seahorse. And it's one of the few creatures that the dad the daddy, the male creature, takes care of the babies, just like in humans. These, of course, are scissors. Oh, this is fun. I like to play on one of these, a skateboard. What other things do we have? Oh, a spoon, a little rusty looking. Rusty. Here is a... A sandal. Here is, um, what is that? Oh, a circle, a circle, a circle is the sun. A circle, a circle, and we are all as one. Oh, in Hawaii, of course, most people know what this is. A surfboard. What is that? Oh, in here. Some people are afraid of these. We have some spiders. They're little plastic spiders. Put them back in their little box. Lots of things start with S. Ooh, this is another creature that some people are a little afraid of. It's a Scorpion. You see that? Scorpion. Looks a bit like a lobster, doesn't it? Oh, here's another really good spider. Looks kind of real. It even jiggles a little bit. Another different kind of snake. There's no snakes of white, except for that one little tiny blind one, right? Here is upper and lower case, big and little S. 
And we have some more little stuff in here. What do we have here? Some, I guess we could call these stones. It's a different word for rock, isn't it? Stones. And a, another six. Oh, this is what you go to the, get at the post office and stick it on a letter and it goes to the mail and it's a stamp. This one really belongs somewhere else. And so do those. All right. That's the little things that start with s. If you look around your house, I bet you can collect some things that all start with that sound. S sound. We did not do any counting today, so we better get that done. All right. Let's do it. Counting from 1 to 100, and then we will... Hopefully you've gotten that figured out 100% pretty soon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Use your fingers. Twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. All right, by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. That was 10 tens. Let's count them. 1 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 100. We can count backwards from 10 if we're good. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two, one, blast off. That's a good thing to do practicing because you can see how many are on your fingers and you can count that on your own. Practice, practice. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, blast off. Rocket ship goes up in the air. All right. We did that, we did that. All right, now a little movement break. Crab walk and bear walk. We can go forwards and backwards. Ready, set, go. Bear walk. You can't really see too well. Here we go. Ba -ba -da. Oh, we can stretch a little bit first. A little stretch, that feels good. Stretch. A little stretch like that. Down at your feet, and when you mark it set, bear walk. Backwards bear walk. Crab walk. Forward crab walk. Backwards bear, backwards crab walk. Stretch of the knees, legs, and good. All right, now ready with our main lesson books to put our form drawing in. I'm going to erase this and do it one more time, so I hope your main lesson book is ready. 
get out your materials. Hopefully they are right nearby, as usual. Green lesson book, block crayons, stick crayons. And ready to go. Okay. You can choose a color. Like I said before, you, it's always nice. I always like to start with a light color so I can change it later. Here we go. I'm going to pretend I see this straight, straight line, tall and straight, from the top to the bottom, like so. All right, now I'm going to do the two sides, starting here. Practice with your finger first, which I didn't do this time. Okay. That's our form drawing. Pause the video if you need to catch up. I guess I will wait for people to finish by starting on my background. Um, you can choose background colors. I think I will use this today. Orange. some other kind of background color. I mean, border color. Probably could have done the border color first. Might have made a little more sense. All around the outside. Touch up my orange a little bit. And then you would do the other side as well, which you can do later. All right, so the next we will turn the main lesson page to the next page and we will do our M and our W, which if I'm not mistaken, we have not done yet. So yeah, we did C and R. You can look at your main lesson pages and try to remember the different lessons that we learned. M and W, I'm going to erase this area while you get your main lesson page turned to the next page. And you may choose a color. I, when I'm writing, I almost always use blue. And if I'm writing to grown-ups, I might use black as well, but I think blue is a nice color to write with, but 
It's okay, especially um, I'm going to make my W, I think, in, in uh, blue. And let's see, and my, my M in purple, because I think of purple mountains sometimes and blue waves. It's a little dark, though, so I'm not sure it's the best choice for this. I'll choose this little bit lighter pinkish purple here for my mountain. And I'm going to, I'm going to first imagine my page is here. I'm going to look at what's about the middle. Is that the middle between here and here? No, that's too high. Is that the middle? No, too low. I think it's about right there. And this is a tricky thing to draw a straight line across. Even harder than drawing a straight line down. And I go to the edge of my page, wherever that is for you. And my mountain. Oh, I think I will do my border first, actually. I do kind of like this orange for a border. If I'm doing it too fast, you may pause this and catch up. Now I know how far down to put my letter. Right to here, so that my letter is on the earth, on the ground, if you think of that as the earth there. All right, in fact, could even draw a little grass down there, just for fun. Remember, I always draw my grass from the bottom, and it's a little, a little more grassy that way. And some up, and some sideways, some way sideways, a few way sideways, a little bit sideways. I curve a little bit too. Sometimes I see if my chalk will kind of curve by itself. Okay. Some a little longer, some a little shorter. There we go. Don't have to do that, but I think it's fun. Mm, mountain, monstrous mountain, a tiny mouse is small compared to a monstrously big mountain. Mountain, lowercase, I'm starting right in the middle, so I let's look at this line. I think to myself, what's the middle of this line? Is it way up here? No. Is it way down there? No. Somewhere about right there. So I imagine that's over here, and I do my M, starting from the top, I go, whoops, straight down, bounce, down there, and up, and over. Now, if you have a blackboard, a chalkboard, and some chalk, you can do it with chalk and for practice, and then put it in your main lesson book. I was imagining you were going right into your main lesson book with this one. Okay. Now with this one, I can draw some waves down here just for fun. I will work on learning how to draw that form some other time, but for now, going up here, again, I'm gonna go about the same size as that one. Start up here, I'm gonna go down. I'm going to bounce back up about halfway. Down again, bounce back up, all the way to the top. There's my what, my what, what, wavy wave, and again, about halfway. This is a tall line here, it goes from this roof to the floor, right about here in the middle. There's a place where I'm going to start my W, my what, what, W, my ah, that's an exciting sound. And I did that one three, three, four times down because my chalk was making a squeaky noise and it's kind of nice to do it. But we would start on this side, we go down, 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 and down. So now I have a 
meta, whoa. Uppercase, lowercase, uppercase, lowercase. And now I can do my background. I think, let's see, I think I will use yellow in this case. And I will do some of it. And I like to go right along. It gives me some practice to go this, to do this, go right along my W first. If you cross over your line a little bit, that's okay. I wonder what happens if you cross your yellow over your blue. Hmm, you know what color it becomes? It becomes a color that we often do notice in the ocean. Let's see a kind of a greenish color, wouldn't we? Yellow and blue together, they make green. Wonderful waves, wondrous waves, wild waves, wavy waves, wispy waves. And what else starts with a whoop whoop Wednesday, whoop whoop weekend. Speaking of days of the week, how about work? We are doing our work. We are doing our work. It's a different kind of word. We, we work on Wednesdays. We work on Wednesdays. Wild, wacky Wednesday. Wonderful Wednesday. Now we're back to mmm. Mm, marshmallows. Mountain, mackerel, which is a kind of fish. Mm, what you say when you're so expressing your yumminess feeling? Mm. Mm. Some people like to drink milk. Some people like to make muffins. Some people get a sickness called mumps. <laughs> and of course there is a mouse, many mice. Oh, I've got a good song for and <clears throat> Many mumbling mice are making midnight music in the moonlight. Mighty mice, many mumbling mice are making midnight music in the moonlight. Mighty nice, little higher. Many mumbling mice are making midnight music in the moonlight. Mighty nice, I think I can go a little higher. Many mumbling mice. Are making midnight music in the moonlight, mighty nights. Many mumbling mice are making midnight music in the moonlight, mighty nights. That's about as high as I can go right now. I think I might have done the same note twice in a row there. That's okay. I lost track of my. Um, all right, we have two more main lesson books, more main lesson book pages done, and our chalkboard is full of our work, and I am excited to be on this journey with you. Um, I have a story to tell, and you can pause this if you are not ready to listen to a story and would like to come back to it later if the person who takes care of you says it is okay. And this is a classic story that people have been telling us, very famous story. You might even know this story already because it is very famous and people have told it for a long time. It has in it this character which we see in some different books and stories of bad, wicked, evil stepmother. <laughs> Many of us, including myself, 
have had lovely and wonderful and supportive stepmothers. So I count myself among those luckies. Um, so, but in some stories, there's a character who is bad, who's a stepmother who doesn't like the children, but that doesn't usually, that's not usually the case. But in this story, it is. All right, this is called Hansel and Gretel. Once upon a time, there lived a woodcutter, a woodchopper, and he had two little children, a boy and a girl named Hansel and Gretel, from a previous marriage. His wife had died long ago, and he had remarried another person who did not particularly like the children, but also, one of the bad things that was happening in those days is all across the land, there was simply not enough to eat. People had a very difficult time having enough money to buy food, having enough food. And these people were no exceptions. They were very poor and only had a little bread left. Well, one day, the man's wife consulted with her husband and said, we have not barely a crumb left. This is our last bread, and we have no way of getting any more flour to make more. So we must do something. There are too many mouths to feed in this house. So let us bring the children out into the woods and leave them there, poor things, to be devoured by the wild animals because we do not have a way to feed them. Well, the husband did not like this idea, but she hounded him and hounded him, and pressured him and pestered him until he finally agreed. So Hansel and Gretel had been listening to this conversation, this plan, and Gretel wept tears of fear and sorrow to hear what her family was planning to do with her and her brother. But Hansel mustered his courage and said, don't worry, Han Gretel. God will not forsake us. I will do something to help us. And he went to the back door and he opened the back door, went outside and saw in the moonlight there were many little white pebbles lying around, shining in the moonlight. And so he went outside and gathered as many as his pockets could hold and he had a plan. Next morning, the stepmother woke them up. Get up, you lazy things. Get outside and get ready to go. We're going into the woods to chop wood. The children got up, fearful for their lives. and They walked away from their home in the middle of the forest with their parents. Hansel kept turning around and looking behind him every few minutes, turning and looking. Stepmother asked him, what are you doing? Why are you looking back? He was looking back at the house. And he said, oh, I am just looking. I see my little white cat up on the roof. Foolish child, that is not a white cat. That is just the sunlight reflecting from the chimney. But really, Hansa was looking back to make sure he knew where he was going and also to check that the little white stones that he was dropping on the ground help him find a path on the way home every so often. He dropped one. Finally, they came to the middle of the woods and the stepmother told them to gather wood for a fire. She said, you rest yourselves here by this fire after they had built it and we will go off into the woods and chop wood and we will come and get you when we are done. Do not leave this place. Well, the children waited and waited hours and hours and could hear in the distance what they thought was chopping wood but the clever woman had tied a branch to a tree and as the wind blew the branch hit against another branch and made a chopping sound to fool the children well next middle of the night by the time it was very late and very cold and the fire had died out the children decided they must try to make their way home and so they looked down and followed Hansel's path that he had made all the way back to the home. Next morning, the parents were surprised and 
the stepmother was very angry and disappointed to see them. But she pretended that it was their fault and not hers and said, what's wrong with you children? Why did you not wait in the woods? We were coming to get you. Well, some time went by and again, they made a similar plan. And this time Hansel was not able to re go outside and gather stones because the door had been locked from the outside. Well, they traveled all through the day and found a place again, a different place deep in the forest, far away from home. But this time Hansel had given his, his uh, bread, they had been given a little piece of bread each. And Hansel could not have any stones, but the bread was white and he told Gretel not to fear he would drop little breadcrumbs on the way and they would find, follow those breadcrumbs back home again. But this time, when the same thing happened and they left the children far out in the woods by themselves for hours and hours and the fire went out, it became dark, they went to go follow the breadcrumbs back in the moonlight. But sadly, all the birds who live in the forest had eaten up all those breadcrumbs and they were gone. While well, the children wandered and wandered and wandered all night long through the woods and finally exhausted, lay themselves down under a bush to go to sleep. In the morning, they got up and wandered and wandered and wandered through the woods further and further, not knowing which direction was home, but looking and looking, but not finding it. They went deeper and deeper into the forest. So two more days went by, so three days they wandered through the woods. They were starving, hungry, dying of thirst. They only had little bits of dew to drink off the leaves and little berries that they knew they could eat from the forest. But very hungry were they. Finally, they arrived in a clearing and thought their eyes must be deceiving them because what did they see but a beautiful little cottage not just a plain old regular cottage made of wood, but this cottage was made of cake and bread and candy and pastries and donuts and all good things to eat, decorated so beautifully all around it. The children couldn't believe their eyes. They walked up to it as if in a trance and broke off some of the bread to eat. While well, inside they heard a voice. And the voice said, who is nibbling at my house? And the children said, the wind, only the wind, the wind, the wind. And they began to eat some more. So good was the food, they could not help themselves but continued to eat because, they, again, they were so starving hungry. Well, pretty soon, the door creaked open, and out came a little old woman, leaning on crutches, hobbling over toward them. Oh, dear children, oh, you are, must be so hungry. You may come inside. I will take care of you. You have nothing to fear from me. And she brought the children into the house, who were so grateful for the hospitality that they could, did not refuse. The woman laid out a beautiful meal for them, plenty of water and milk and good things to eat. When they had had their fill, the woman said, you must be so very tired. Let you sleep here. And she brought them to two little tiny beds, beautifully made with comfortable pillows and blankets, the likes of which they had never slept in before. So comfortable were those beds. But the next morning, Early in the morning, the old woman, who was really a witch, grabbed Hansel roughly by the arm, brought him across the room, and although he shouted with fear, she locked him in a little cage. And then he woke the sister up. Get up, you lazy bones! Get some water, get some food going. This little child in the cage must be fattened up so that I can eat him in a few weeks. Oh, you can imagine their fear and despair. But Gretel seemed to have no choice. She became the old witch's slave. Now witches have red eyes and they cannot see very well at all, but they have a very good sense of smell. And little by little, 
They cooked and fed Hansel, and Gretel slaved away, cooking and cleaning, and never let out of the witch's sight. And each morning, the witch would go to the cage and tell Hansel to stick your finger out the cage, boy, so that I can feel whether you're fattened up enough to eat. Well, Hansel had an idea. He took one of the chicken bones, which he had been given to, as food, and he stuck that outside, and the old witch could not see it. And she reached out and thought, oh, that is very skinny indeed. Feed him some more. And so each day they fed him more and more, and poor Gretel was given almost nothing to eat, just a few crumbs and water. And Hansel was forced to eat and eat and eat, but never did the witch think he was fat enough to eat when she reached in and felt his finger, which was really a chicken bone. Well, finally the old woman had had enough. She ran out of patience and she told the girl, today we will cook Hansel. Prepare the fires in the oven. She had a big old fashioned oven. Inside you build a big fire. Once it is very hot, then you push the coals back to the edges and you put in whatever you're going to bake. Well, they built a huge fire. And when it was very hot, the witch said, Gretel, go, reach inside the stove, climb in there and reach in there and see if it is hot enough. Gretel had an idea. She said, oh, I am too small. I do not know how to do that. What do you mean? Foolish, silly girl, you go like this. And she climbed up onto the edge of the stove and reached inside and stuck her head inside. And just at that moment, Gretel gave her a big push and the witch tumbled into the oven. She closed the door tight and latched it and the witch died a terrible, painful death, screaming and crying in the oven. Well, Gretel rushed over to let her brother out of the cage hugged each other, that they were delivered from their terrible circumstances, and looked around the cottage and found to their amazement every nook and cranny and drawer and cupboard was filled with precious jewels. They filled their pockets with as many rubies and jewels as they could possibly find, and they started to try to find their way home. Well, as they searched and searched through the forest they began they finally came to an opening and there was a big lake surrounded by dense forests and boggy marshy lands that they could not go around and they saw that they could not get across the lake very well by themselves but there was a duck a beautiful white duck large beautiful white duck that offered to carry them across the the lake and they could not go both together because the duck could not carry them one at a time and came back for the other and carried them both across. And what did they find when they reached the other side? But they looked around and they were familiar with these woods. They were familiar to them. They remembered them from being near their house. And sure enough, they made their way through the woods and back home to their home. In the meantime, evil stepmother had died father was so grateful to see his children. They all hugged and kissed and had a wonderful reunion. And the children showed him all the jewels and things that they had found at the witch's house and told them their stories. And they were rich and comfortable and happy for the rest of their days. So it is, and so it was, and so it shall be. Thank you for listening, and I will see you 